Welcome back to the in game podcast. What were you you punch? He was supposed to go. Okay, I'll go straight to the camera. All right, all right, all right here we go. <laughs> please leave this in. <laughs> please, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. 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 Stay ready. Please leave it in. Please oh, yeah, leave no, it in. that nigga was pointing. I ain't <laughs> was, I was pointing that was oh. Blue 42. No, I said, I'll point you to your camera. Said, hut, hut, hut. That nigga faked me out. He, he faked me out. out with the, yeah, oh, he, did, he waved away the pick. You know what I mean? I was gone. Yo, welcome back to the In Game Podcast. Yo, I'm Lynch Hunt. I'm here with my main man. What's his name? <laughs> Rod Brown. <laughs> Yo, I be throwing the 52 third, fake out with him. that third person? Blue 52, main me, man. It's <laughs> Blue 42. See, yo, so no, no. Blue 52 is a fake. Not, so so 52 fake out. So you, we, we used to call it the 52 fake out because the, the, the cards. Now you, man, you don't know nothing about the 52 fake, man. 52 fake out. Blue 52 set. Come on, man. Let's get this party jumping, man. Look, welcome back to the In Game Podcast, man. I'm Lynch Hunt. Yo, we are back with another one. My man Rob Brown is ready to go in today, man. Yeah, I'm with you, big dog. I got a couple things, man. Not I don't ready. know about going in. We got a couple That's things that we. About. I think we want to bless the people. I had an interesting conversation. It was super interesting. It's simple, but very, very interesting. Okay. And so I was talking to uh, someone about trying to, um, you know, become more um, simplistic. And trying to, you know, um, what's the what's the term? Minimalist. Okay. And you know, we do like we got you know, like with workout clothes. I got all black workout clothes. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. the same pair of shorts. Sure. I know people like, hey, you wear the same clothes every day. We got the same pair of shorts. About seven, six, seven, eight pair. I got the same t shirt Six, seven, eight. Um, you know, socks. Same about two, three packs of socks at a time. So it makes I, one less thing I have to think about when it comes to working out. Absolutely. But I said, I, you know, I'm trying to bring that to you know everyday wear. I got on all black. I got on all black on purpose because it's easy, right? And they were like, "Oh my God, I don't know how you do that." Because you know, this was a this was a female. Shout out Trice. Go ahead and shout out Trice. <laughs> uh, I don't know how you do that because I got to you know I, I need the colors. As there's, ooh, I don't know if I can ever do that. So it, it went. That conversation went from that. And it morphed to um, um, having sentimental value over things, mm-hmm. right? And I'm, I was like, yeah, I can sell, I can sell anything, car, house, boat, it don't matter. I, I, I don't have any sentimental value over anything. I, I said, you know, the things along the way are like props, right? And so, like, and so we talked about some examples, of like, like the the hairpin that my great grandmother had. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I could sell the hairpin. Now, I, w- I would want not to sell the picture that she took that I have with her wearing the hairpin. And then I said, the picture is just a manifestation of my thoughts because we think in pictures, and that's just a physical there manifestation go, of man. that, Come right? On. And so, but you know, and it was it was somebody else in the room. They were looking at me like like what you can you, yeah I can sell anything and then and then you know I was thinking about it because I wanted to make sure you know I was um, being on point with my with my thought and with my point and then I was like there's one thing I would like to have and that's the house I grew up in mm-hmm. but outside of that you know and they were just like well don't you have something that you know you're so you mean to tell me if your mom gave you something that was special to her and then she gave it to you a pen or whatever it was okay. you you could sell it. I was like, yeah. And so I'm like, man, does that make me, does that make me anything? First of all, but if not, like, is that, is that not okay? Cause I don't have a, I don't have a, you know what I'm saying? I could, yeah. There's no, no I don't have any kind of sentimental value, value to, anything, to anything. Right. Damn. And cold. so I, I, I go back to memories. <laughs> is, is, is that what that means? I'm like cold. Oh, maybe, I go back to I, memories. Right. I can dig it. Come on. And so I was like, me. Or you I just say that because you don't have any. Like no, you it's can't not think that. Of nothing. Well, I, I, I really don't. Go ahead, let's keep going. Keep I going. really don't. But I said that the thing that's important is making memories, because I can make, I can hold on to the memory, mm-hmm. and again I can take a picture of something, which is just the memory <laughs> manifested, right? And I can touch it. But like having the things that are in the picture, I don't have to have the things that are in the picture. Yeah, but memorabilia is is something that you know you you got some things like you you just went to this stupid ass race. I got and trophies. You, 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 I got. So that's the same. So, that's memorabilia. Yeah, but it's not. It's not. 
It marks there's the time not a single when you trophy did that I have that I can't or I wouldn't sell. Oh, I, I mean, that I wouldn't yeah. part with. You OJ? Okay. What do you mean? Why I got oh. called OJ? Yeah. Why, why oh. did I just get called OJ? What the? <laughs> What, 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 that's Come why on, I man. Can't go open ahead, up go to ahead. you, man. It's, it's that's why men don't open up, man. <laughs> hey, because man. we get judged, we get caught. Why get caught for a rental? <laughs> what, 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 what I do? Because he sold his. Um, nah, they, they stole it. Then they steal his joints, and then he went and, and hold a man gunpoint to get the stuff back. And then I think he wound up selling them after that or something yeah, like yeah, that too. And, and, yeah. and that was uh, the Bronco Chase part two. Part two, yeah, yeah, yeah. he like, went to jail. Like, That's what he actually went to jail for. Yeah, he actually went to prison for that for stealing his own stuff. For, for stealing his own stuff back. Oh, okay, the memorabilia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sentimental value. Huh. But go ahead, anyway. Go ahead, man. I was just, I was just, I don't be wanting to. No, I just threw that. Con- I, I just wanted to have that conversation. There's a lot to unpack there with that, man. I just want to have that know. conversation. Like, so do you hold on to stuff? You got stuff yeah, that I got you hold shit on to? to? Hold on, I'm a fucking hoarder on the low. Yo. But, but, I, and, and, and that's a condition. A that's that's a that's a diagnosis. But I mean, do you have stuff there? You like? I, I, there's absolutely no way I can get rid of this, bro. I got stuff, man. I'm telling you. Like, Give me an example. You always talk about something. I got shit that Pick, like give me an needs example. to go out in the damn trash. No, no, no. Give me an example of that sentimental thing goodwill. that you hold on to. Give me an example of the sentimental thing that you hold on to. All right, so check it out. I was going. Um, I went to Jersey um, a couple days ago. Right. Um, right. Um, shout out to my brother. My brother just came home from prison after twelve nice. year bid. Yeah, you know I mean, we went there so make sure he was big brother. Yeah, little brother, little brother, little little brother, brother. man. Yeah. I'm big brother to anybody, no matter what the fuck uh, age is. A big we. dog, Glenn Robb, nigga. He was a flea. <laughs> now I'm talking about. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, man. Right. I live this shit. Anyway, check it out, man. Uh, um, I went home and I was going through. Um, I don't know text messages, something like that. Mm. But anyway, um. <laughs> Uh, I seen mm-hmm. in the text the postcard that I wrote to my mom the day mm. I hit the county jail. So the day you hit the county jail, you're indigent. Mm-hmm. Um, you know your your money hasn't. If if you got locked up with a hundred thousand dollars on you, it's still not going to transfer to your books. You know until a few days or maybe even longer. So basically, everybody's indigent. You mean Nobody has any money. Of your money. Yeah, whatever. Not like, the, yeah, you know, any, it don't matter what you got. You, contraband. You, you can have whatever. Oh, they they taking all your shit anyway. If you getting scooped by the feds, if you getting scooped by the feds, nothing is everything seized. You know until everything shit get clear. Even, what everything. happens to the stuff they don't find? Do they try to come back and try to find it? They're going to fucking get confidential informants and they're going to probe until they fucking find half of that shit. You ain't so you're going to have you ain't, uh, you ain't buried like that's why I moved from New Jersey because of that comment right there. Mm. I moved from New Jersey because one of them little motherfucking 15 year old kids, when I got locked up, I came home, he's 25 now, mm-hmm. he probably think I got something buried. Mm. And next thing you know, I'll be fucking uh, tied up, hog ties mm. somewhere, talking about the the, the, the headline said $8.3 million, and, and nigga, you got some money you buried some somewhere. Money somewhere yeah, I'm out of this bitch. Trades, I'm everything. over here uh, training somebody at LA Fitness, and you gonna kidnap me thinking that I got some shit. Uh, man, I'm out of there. How man. much are you making? At LA Fitness? Uh-huh. How much were you making at LA $6 Fitness? Six dollars for thirty minutes, and one of them niggas had kidnapped me for my six dollars thing. That I got some shit <laughs> from tw- twelve fucking years prior to that, man. Wow, niggas crazy. Anyway, and then, and then they think he lying. He's like, yo, where's the money? I'm like, yo, because like, I still look. I move like I, you know what I mean? Like I'm, you know what I mean? The guy. So anyway, look, I found the postcard. Um, that I wrote to my mom and it was actually, you know, basically I was just telling her that, you know, I'm, I'm still going, you know, make it and, you know, I'm gonna make this up to you. And, you know, uh, it was basically affirmations. I was just affirming her that, you know, this is just a minor setback for a major comeback, you know, and that type of thing. So anyway, I said all this stuff to say that has some significant sentimental value to me. Um, that is memorabilia at its finest. It is a trophy. And, um, uh, uh, I, I, I got it somewhere. Did you but, sell um, me that car for ten grand? Absolutely not. I wouldn't sell you that shit for nothing. Hundred thousand. No, no. You can keep putting whatever you on there. I'm not going to sell that. So you would not the other sell day me I had that, a conversation. You would not Check sell, this out. Wait, wait, wait. You wouldn't sell I, me that I car just for a million? You no, know, I'm not going to sell for ten for million. That's a hundred million. I'm not going to sell you fucking car. That All makes right, I'm not. No so, sense to me. I know it's because you because you you cold, baby. You cold. It's reason why you got you know seven eight figures and shit like that. Not to make any sense to me. Cold, baby. You super cold. It's all right. Ice cold, baby. It's all good. You need that. 
you know, get to the level that you on. And maybe one day I get cold too. But you know, I've been through a lot of shit, man. I still got a little warm place in my heart for a lot of shit. Do you know what you can do you for know, mom with with uh, ten million? Absolutely. So I give you ten million for that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm. Don't worry about. It. I'll flip it and bounce it. I'll figure out how to stretch all it and all that other type I, of shit. I, I, I get interrupt you. Go, I interrupt your thoughts. Yeah, I was going somewhere with it, man. So uh, the other day, man, uh, this lady was working out with us and. Um, and she said something about a pimp or something like that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And and I had to hurry, hurry up and correct her. I was like, nah, you don't want to be no pimp. I said, you want to be something like a pimp. Mm -hmm. and, and she looked at me kind of crazy. And I was like, yeah, you want to be something like a pimp. Because at the end of the day, if them hoes ain't making that money, a pimp will sell his own ass. So at mm -hmm. the end of the day, you want to be something hey, like, a, true? like a pimp. I just, I just told you, square motherfucker. I'm trying to tell this nigga something. He never pays me any mind. Yo, I can't you ask a question. Something I, 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 like, I, I, so let, let's keep track. Uh, uh, you, let's keep track. You, you keeping track? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm OJ and OJ. Now I'm a square. Square, yeah. So that's two. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, track. Yeah, keep you, going. Yeah, you, you bad, going. real bad right I now. I asked a question. <laughs> I asked a question about a pimp. We got it. Yeah, we got losing get you right. his 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 employees. So I do want to go back to something because you you you. Uh, you, you set it off, um, and I know we go into this little memorabilia stuff and all that other stuff, but you said something that was super profound, and I think we definitely can help the people out. You was like, yo, I wear the same, you know, all the time, and sure. it's because, um, you know, you, you make decisions and all that different type of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, did, you, did you get to that part? Because it's, it's actually called- Yeah, I said basically, I, I, it's one less thing I got to think about. One, one less thing you got to think one about. Thing but to, and decide, right. It, absolutely, and decide. Yeah, correct. And that was the key word because um, it's actually called decision fatigue. Mm, so it, it's, it. it's actually something out there called decision fatigue. And people Is like that what yourself, happens when, when you're like, what you want for dinner? I don't know. What you want for dinner? <laughs> yeah, is that yeah. fatigue setting in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at that yeah. point, um, you can't decide because no, that's just that's just <laughs> having a significant other. It's having a wife. Oh, is that what a it girlfriend? Is? Right. Like that's that's, that's what that is. <laughs> right. Yo, so yeah, like that that does. Um, at the end of the day, some of us don't execute on certain things because we've wasted our decisions uh, throughout the day. Um, hair, makeup, you know, nails, uh, all that stuff that the ladies, um, you know, waste their decisions on. But yeah, yeah, decision fatigue is actual. Um, yeah, uh, just to, to tap on that, they were saying that um, if you recall, like in Obama's, uh, like when he was president, he basically only wore two types of suits. Like, and he basically was saying that had to make tons of decisions all the time. So he was like, I just need to, I need to take some of those decisions out of the picture by just creating that normalcy. Like, yo. It's either gonna be a blue suit, it's gonna be a gray suit. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you look at like Steve Jobs. Yeah, look at that's what I was doing. Yeah, some of the CEOs. They yeah, that's, that was a practice. Yep, that's what they do. Yeah. Uh, Zuckerberg, Steve yeah. Jobs, they were the same thing right. every single day because they're not gonna waste any time, any effort, any energy, or extra resources on clothes. We just you know look at us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. match. Yeah. I got to be fresh. You got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two hundred pairs of sneakers. I wasted a, a, a thirty minutes trying to figure out which pair of pants I was going to rock with this mm. joke right here. Still beat you here, but you know what I mean. Wow. I don't, you know. You you got a job wow. right now. I'm now. slow. Nah, nah. You got a job now, Tommy. Wow, wow. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what I'm learning, man. Because people, on. you know, co uh, I don't know how many people I've talked to. Like, not a whole lot of people because circle is really, really small and tight. But the people that I've talked to. Um, like, why are you doing this? Why are you giving me energy to this? Yada, yada, yada. And so um, for me, it's like it's like a trip, right? It's like a vacation. It's like an experience. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you the thing that, um, and I guess it, it, it might go back to me being cold or whatever you call me, you know, calling me out, my not, not using my name. But um, I... Like when it comes to nonprofits, five hundred one c threes, I've I know how to give to nonprofits, right? Mm -hmm. I know how to give my time, I know how to give money to nonprofits. Done that for years, tens of thousands of dollars, countless hours of time. But um, I did it oftentimes because of the individual, sometimes because of the mission. But like working uh, for a nonprofit mm -hmm. and working for the people that we serve has given me an entirely different sense of mission because every single day mm -hmm. we work for 
people that have been marginalized, people that are underinsured, people that don't have any insurance, um, and helping them with the most important aspect of life, and that's their health, health. right? So it has given me a whole new sense of mission, which carries over to everything that we do, any decision that we make, anybody that we hire, mm -hmm. you know, where are you as it relates to the mission? We have doctors that can go make more money other places, but they, they work at uh, United Health Centers because of the mission. Mm -hmm more than anything. So that has given me a, a greater sense of mission. And, and so which, which had me pondering is, you know, the people that, cause I see some people like, like, like teachers, like people are in education, specifically education, like the ones that are passionate about teaching, they will never ever make a whole lot of money in a classroom. Um, but they're super passionate about it. And I often wondered, and they're very talented, very smart, and I often wondered, like, why is, you know, where does that come from? And I don't know, you know, I never knew if that was, like, innate. Is that something that's learned? Do you have to have a C moment to, you know, push you toward being more mission-focused? Uh, what is what is that thing? And And for me, it's been being in and around and seeing the people that we help on a day-to-day -day basis and also the infectious, you know, energy from the people that uh, are mission focused, mm -hmm. that kind of bleeding off for me. So I guess being in that proximity as well. So um, I'm, I'm really enjoying like, like just absolutely positively adoring the mission if that makes sense. So yeah, I don't know if, I don't know how people get, you know, I never really, you know, on the outside looking in and even, I mean, I sat on the board, mm -hmm. right. Uh, but I wasn't like intimately involved with day-to-day -day operations, really wasn't intimately involved with patients, things like that. So um, didn't really have that sense. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's the, and, it, and, it, and it's, it's probably more than, it's probably more a renewed type of, um, uh, feeling or or presence um, because at one point in time I did you know we uh, myself and partners we had a behavioral health care agency similar work um, similar population um, but again we were you know being CEO or being COO kind of had us removed directly from the patient so I don't know anyway that that's the that's the thing I'm learning so and that's the thing that um, that um, is helping motivate me um, and that's the mission itself. So I'm not, you know, yeah. So being mission focused is something that I don't think I've always been. It's always been about, let me go over here. Let me create something that's going to create, you know, wealth or revenue that I can go support yeah. the mission Yeah, that's dope. from that standpoint. So I, I heard, just heard you mention like, um, you know, how, has you focused more on the health? Has that, have, has that, spilled over into your uh, personal health um, yeah, it, um, it, it, that, that, that consciousness yeah it, it it has but it's funny um i don't know it, it has but it but it hasn't quite yet i mean it's it's like the you know it's like the the shoemaker that doesn't have any shoes so you know what i'm saying so it's like that's your question is not as much as you might think it has okay because you know the work that we're doing mm -hmm. you know that you're doing with myself and several other people working with us as it relates to fitness and nutrition i think um that's been a greater emphasis than you know me working in a in a in a healthcare facility yeah more but what, so i think maybe what i'm trying to say is you see um the the condition or state that some people in mm -hmm. are in and right. you know you guys have to help you know on the health care side but you know they actually have to get to that point yeah, you yeah. know and sometimes you know when you see people at these points does it make you take your health practices more you know you know okay. just a little bit more yeah, serious from that perspective yeah, yes sir Absolutely. Yeah. We were, you know, I think, you know, was it may have been Wendy who was recently talking about seeing people like her age or in her class yeah. going, Oh my God. Like, I think it was me. Is it you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I know home. both of y'all were speaking. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. Like going, Oh my God, like how in the world, like, 
you know, how did you let that happen? I mean, I know how it happened because it, you know, happened to me. And that's, uh, again, I don't have any regrets in life. And I've said publicly that the only regret that I have is that I didn't take care of my body the way I should have yeah. over my entire life, not just, you know. Just a period. Uh, yeah, yeah, not just period. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I think, um, you know, I was, when I was talking and me and Wendy were talking um, to the group, uh, a couple of days ago and, and I was like you know I had to ask myself why um, just kind of like what was the difference between you know my group of friends and family that are here and then my group of friends and family that are there yeah. and I just you know I just could only attribute it to the environment right. um, which makes us more you know health conscious or you know um, focused on you know taking care of ourselves a little bit right. better um, so you know I, I just man it's tough so do you man. think it's hard. do you think if you were in that environment you would not be, you know, fitness or nutrition conscious. Yeah, no, I, I, lower would, level I, I, I would be, but I'm, I'm saying the people, um, that are not in this environment, um, don't, you know, they don't lead from, so I'm, I'm leading from, but you would still, health be, but you would still be a health conscious person in that environment. Yeah. So, if that's the case, how much of it is really environment? If if we can put you in that environment, yeah. then you're still going to be healthy. Yeah, so I would be going to another environment. Here, I fostered the environment. I actually created this uh, environment. So even though you guys are here, you still have to actually come into this particular world to, to, to be a part of this environment. Um, you, it's, you, you see it all the time. As soon as people leave AWOL, they... Mm. The, the environment's still there. Like, we're still there. <laughs> right, right. They go on and they lose themselves. Then, you know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, when they're ready to come back, we our, our little open world arms, is, on. yep, we open right up for open them. Open arms, come on back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's starting to sound like a gang, man. I'm, oh, I'm just, that's what I'm saying. Oh, gang, gang. <laughs> gang, yeah, gang. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a workout the other day. We called it the Rolling 60s. I know I got red on today, but oh, we called it God. the Rolling 60s, man. It was a whole, uh, everything was 60 reps. You know what I'm saying? So it was a crip work. Out. Uh, uh, <laughs> Go ahead, big dog. Yeah. So, um, so, so, Ra, you was kind of talking about like it when when you were talking about like kind of the um, like where your, your old job and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I kind of got this whole thing about like responsibility, right? And just yeah. kind of like basically caring about the people that you're actually there to serve. Yeah. Right. So basically, there was this big thing in the in the news about how this uh this food um this food critic was in Atlanta for a week for a couple of days and basically you know he was going around he was going to these different restaurants and basically it wound up exposing a lot of things and then essentially what happened is he went to a restaurant he never got the food because they had all these rules of places of basically of why you basically couldn't do certain stuff right but the, the thing that happened was that the restaurant basically turned back around and kind of like try to poke fun at mm -hmm. the situation and didn't take it seriously. So then like the people were basically like, yo, like this is, they're showing their true colors. Right. So the question is, is like, um, like it really kind of got into like service, right. And customer service. And basically like, can you ever create a business without having a customer service plan in place, particularly as a black business owner? Why'd you, why'd you, why'd you add that caveat at the end? Well, that's the, that's, that's the situation, right? Like, I mean, we know this as a business as a whole, right? But, yeah. you know, I'm just, particularly what happened in Atlanta, it was a, it was yeah. a black owned restaurant, right? Right. And basically they were saying stuff like, you know, uh, like, you know, if, if you spend, if you have over five people or spend over a hundred dollars, like you're going to, like, you're going to have to, um, like pay gratuity automatically. Right. It was like saying stuff like we're guaranteeing great food, but everything else is up in the air. Like literally they have this stuff written on paper. Yeah. And basically like what it kind of just showed is like this restaurant in particular did not have a plan to like actually like do right by their customers. Yeah. It's just like we're providing you a service like you got to take it or leave it. Right. So it's, it's that's, that's interesting because for there's a restaurant that is very popular, does very well. And that's their business model. They insult you. They throw you the napkins. They throw you, you know, your, your silverware. Um, they throw you your straws. They call you names. Uh, they tell you what they are and what they aren't. And they're very popular. Right. 
Is it a black owned restaurant? No, Absolutely but not. But is it, but is but is that a gimmick or oh, is that's, that that's a part of their business plan? That's a part of, or that's a part of their strategy. That's a not, that's a part of their um, not necessarily. I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a gimmick because that's how they that's how they function. That's a, that's how they operate, right? Um, that's what they do. When you go you go into that restaurant with the expectation that you are going to be insulted, right? Now, if you're talking about now, if if I go into a Ruth Chris. And that happens, I'm going to be shocked because of the standard that Ruth Chris has established. Now, when it comes to just customer service, um, I think one of the things you have to look at is, uh, well, I know one of the things you have to look at is culture, right? We abandon acknowledging culture. And when you talk about a, um, if it's a black restaurant that has a culture, a black culture, and, and I'll just kind of go out on a limb saying that there is such thing as a black culture, then the way that restaurant moves and handles different aspects of the restaurant will resemble a cookout because that's a part of our culture, right? Now, the owners, the proprietors can say, you know what? Our standard is not going to mimic or match our culture. Our standards are going to be something higher or greater than that. And then that's where you'll have um, or you'll see something greater than the cookout. Now, at the cookout, what do I mean by that? At the cookout, what do you have? You have, you know, food being cooked all over the place. You ain't got no gloves. You got you got bugs. Everybody know you just swat the bug. You know, give me a hot dog. There's no nothing, no politeness. We are what? We are family, right? So, again, the standard is that we are family. We're polite to each other, but it ain't no formal nothing, right? So, is it possible that that culture is transferred to some black-owned restaurants? Possible. Um, But then, again, the standard is the standard when it comes to service, cleanliness, you know, the taste of the food, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know. I mean, know. the thing is, but I mean, but the, look past the restaurant, right? Like right. there's a, there's a stigma about black owned businesses right? yeah, yeah, yeah. about that customer service yeah. and expectations yeah. are in like, are in hell, like the bars in hell. Yeah. So like, why is that okay? And why can't we? I don't, we, I don't think it's I'm, okay. Why, why is the, why is the stigma okay? I, I mean, mean, the perception I mean, is I mean, there because of, of well, Why is nobody willing to take the accountability to fix it? Um, or it's, you know, so what is what does fixing it look like, right? I mean, so I mean, so basically, just to kind of tap back and in what, here. So, what part some, is broke? so basically, the the restaurant is called the Real Milk and Honey, right? That's the mm-hmm. name of this restaurant. It's a popular restaurant. It's supposed to be a luxury restaurant in Atlanta, right? Okay. Most so they got, people pay, they got most the luxury of, tag on this restaurant. That's what most people. Consider. So you expect to have a luxury experience, right? Because they got the luxury prices. Like gotcha. That happens, right. right? But like, does the food match the luxury prices? It, it's it's hit or miss. Hit or miss. Okay. They they you have people who say the yes the food is good. Yeah. Right. But it's gonna it's gonna cost you the experience. Gotcha. So if right. the if this experience doesn't match the perceived value or the standard, then there's going to be constant friction. So, but back to the overarching question about black owned businesses and um, and customer guess, service. Yeah, and having a responsibility to to serve your customers well. Yeah. And so, and again, I think, I think the, I think customer service itself um, is, it's um, the definition of customer service. So let me ask you this, EA, would you go to a gym that doesn't have hot water or doesn't have air conditioning in the summer uh, and doesn't have heat in the winter? Would you go to a gym that, fits that description uh it, it would depend on the price that i'm spending on it um i don't know let's say the price is 100 bucks a month um i mean it's a hit or miss probably not though probably not and and you probably wouldn't because of i mean just those those three things that i told you well, about well no i mean my thing is like they would have to be they would have to be a, a significant amount of other stuff that i really enjoy to mm-hmm. make me let that go. So there would have to be like, when you look at the, the total value package, there would have to be other things to outweigh 
A hundred percent. Gotcha. So would you just on just on what I told you, would you go, Oh, they're not providing great customer service. No, nah, that's not, that's not, that's no, that w- I wouldn't say that in that, in that regard. I yeah. would, I would say something along the lines. What of, if I told you it was a black owned business? Would that change anything? No. Okay. What were you going to say along the lines of what? Like, I mean, I'm talking about along the lines of like, let's say like I'm getting, I'm going in there and I'm getting, I'm getting harassed or, or sold to the. Yeah. What if you go in there, you get cussed at, you get cussed out by the, by the staff, by the, by the staff, by the owner. Yeah. I'm out. You're out. Yeah. I'm out of there. So you're out because you got I mean, cussed in, in, out. In the sense of, in the sense of like. If I'm just walking in, like if it's like yo, like we've working yeah, out, you're brand like, new. Like, you're just no, like, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like if I, if it's a class or whatever, like and some shit like that, like no, that's something different. If it's a class, okay. If, let's say it's a class, or you just walked in and you're working out, uh, you're asking for advice, you're asking for help to get better, and all of the the criteria I told you earlier, all of that exists, and you get cussed out. <laughs> you're mean, leaving. You're not participating. Yeah, probably not. Okay, so if. Three to five hundred other people did participate. What are they compared to you? I mean, they're they, they cool with it. Like that's what they're that's what they're willing to settle for. So you leaving says that you're not settling for that level of service, right? So would you want to know why the three to five hundred people still continue to be there? And would it or would it matter? I mean, I mean. Uh, so most people, if you have a bad experience, you're going to tell seven to nine people, right? If those in those seven to nine people, if they're like, nah, like I've been like, you know, you just had, you just came on a bad day or mm-hmm. something like that. Like, yeah, like I, I it's no, not, I everything I talked about, that's daily. That's on the daily. <laughs> and you stroke a check or your car gets hit for 125 a month. No, no, yeah, no, probably not. Probably not. Okay. All right. Just, just, I'm just curious. Because there are places that are just like what I described that people subscribe to and their lives are like transformed. I get that. But one, one thing is like, so what you, what, you, what, you said, what you said is a lot of good points. Right. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of great points. Yeah. Right. But there are there's a difference between like these one off things. Like I know no one's perfect, yeah, yeah. but I'm looking at rule. I'm looking at 10 rules here. From a restaurant, well, it's actually more than that. It's yeah. 11 rules here. Right? And the first thing that says, we guarantee great food. Everything else is left to chance. And in yeah. quotes, it says, we try our hardest, though. We really do. So do you, so here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. I, and, and again, I'm, I'm speculating here, right? Yeah, of course. So nobody gets mad at, I always say this, nobody gets mad at you telling them the truth. Right? They might not like the truth, but don't get mad at you telling them the truth. So what they do or what they did or what they do is they tell you the truth. That's their truth. Everything else is left to chance, which means you can have a bad experience with a hostess. You can have a bad experience with a waitress, but they're telling you, you know what I do know? This food is going to be great. We, we can control the food, right? But we can't control Shay Shay's attitude that particular day. No, and as a business owner, why would you yeah. ever let that happen? You, 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 don't, you don't let it happen. So um, the, the point I want to make is if I wish that more black people would judge black businesses on how they fix it. Okay. All right. So on how, no, they, no, so on how they fix the perceived poor customer service. So if now, if now you saying that, if you say en- enough people have screamed out loud and said, yo, mm-hmm. this ain't right. Mm-hmm. And they just said, tough shit. Mm-hmm. Then what? So the then what is I would go to, again, they have 50 people who said, I ain't coming back here ever again. But how many people continue, you know, to go to that restaurant and enjoy that really, really good food and every now and then have a bad experience? But because they told you, the food is going to be good. We can control that. But I can't control Shay Shay. I don't know how Shay Shay is going to respond to you. I know what Shay Shay knows what the standard is. Shay Shay knows what the expectations are. But I don't know if Shay Shay is going to. So how many people continue to rock with them in spite of the list of 10 things that you have? And does that matter? 
And because they tell you that, hey, the food is going to be great, but all these other things, I don't know. It's, it's, it's left up to chance. Does that mean they're, they, they display or, um, you know, have poor customer service? Or does that mean they're just telling you the truth? I, I and are they still in business? And are they making money? And are they profitable? That's what I want to know. So, I'm, so, I'm, so you're saying that it's cool. It's cool to to throw some of these things off. I'm the saying window. it's cool as to tell as, you as the truth. You, as long they as told as, every every other restaurant I bet fits those ten things that you have. They just didn't tell you. I, I mean, let's. I mean, Rod. That's <laughs> that's not that's not even like that's not even like. House rules at restaurants have you will not see that at any other type of restaurant. And they just uh, other than I, a black I respect them restaurant. for telling you what, were, what, were some of the what other, they are. Joints on there. All right, so second one is uh, we don't provide individual checks. However, we allow to three forms of payment: eighty percent gratuity on parties of five or more, or checks larger than one hundred and five dollars. No modifications on top ten brunch menu items. All right? If you have, a, and it says in quotes, if you have a food allergy, please choose another item without the allergen. Then number five is be nice. And then in number six is no reservations unless you're Barack Obama. Hey, there's always exceptions to every rule. It says no table hibernation. Others got to eat too. If we prepare your selected item to our menu specifications, we will not remove that item from your bill. Our entrees are not samples. Thank you. And you have a problem with which one of those? A lot of it. I have a problem with none of them. Because they told me the truth. Now, they just gave you the ground rules. Now, it's up to you to decide if you're going to go and partake in that really good food or not. What about you, Ed? So are a lot of people having bad experience at this place right here? Is yeah. that why it's in the headlines? Yes. Or, well, they, or, well or, I mean, well, the, just, the main reason, well, the part, the part of the reason. the bad experience is well, predestined. Well, no, 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 the, the part of the reason is, well, is the reason why it, it got so much, so much, uh, what's called it, was that. Just a very popular TikToker, like who's a food reviewer, yeah. basically went right and was going to review the restaurant because everybody was talking about it, and basically um, they were saying that oh, like he wanted to he wanted to order takeout, right? Nothing says it was no no takeout on this on their website. They have to order it on on a menu on a, on an app. They go on the app, they're closed on the app, right? They go to the restaurant, right? Basically they're trying to, trying to go and order food, you know order takeout. Said no no takeout. All right, can we get a table? That's going to be a two-hour wait, right? And, oh, no, the, instead of saying it was a two-hour wait, they said, um, we're closed, right? So we're closing down for to do a deep clean, but then people were then going in and getting sat after they told them that. Right? So it was like it was like a whole wait, weird— this restaurant had a two-hour wait? Was it a legit two-hour wait? No, 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 so, no, 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 wait? no. So, so this, in this particular case, they told the person, no, we can't let you in because we're about to do a deep clean. right. Right, but then, let then let after that when they're in the car, other people were going in and yeah. then getting sat down. Yeah. Right, and then when he then came, then when the actual influencer came to the door, they wanted to, they wanted to sit him down. Yeah. Like after the fact, okay. after just telling his wife or you know his yeah. wife and his his like sister like yo nah like we're closed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, Bad then, restaurant. But then but then when they recognize don't him, go EA. I mean I'm not going. And I'm you're not, not going because what? I mean, not nah, just because I mean, this article and because of this this information that you got. No, nah, Mary's I'm going. It's in Atlanta, and I, and I live. But if you're in Atlanta, Atlanta, would you go by? No, nah, probably not. Why? Because I don't. I've I've gone to plenty of other restaurants that don't have rules like this. Because this this is weird. This you is weird to me. This you've is gone weird to, a, to me. You've gone to plenty of other restaurants that have rules like this. You just this, didn't know it. No, my thing is like. I mean, my thing is you got, are, you, you never got a thing that said gratu- gratuity already on the bill. No, this says no. And you party, said, "What's this?" And no they said, "Oh, we charge large, gratuity for for parties of six or more." No parties larger than four on days that end in Y. Okay, <laughs> what's wrong with that? But then you, all, but, you but you're also going to charge me eighteen percent gratuity if I have if there's five or more at my at, at my table. Have you ever got a bill where it said gratuity already on the bill? Yeah, of course. I'm, Did I don't they have tell you that. that the gratuity was going to already be on the bill? Or you just got it. You're like, hey, what's this? Did you go, oh, my God, they got this rule where they just charge us for gratuity. I ain't never coming back in here. But my thing is, I've also never been charged gratuity when it's just me and my wife. And our bill is over a certain dollar amount. Okay. Shit's weird. It's different. Shit's weird. It's different. (laughs) I want to 
want to try the yeah, restaurant yeah, yeah. now. I, I want to try the I restaurant wanna, now. Wanna exactly. Well, yeah, yeah, I want to go to the restaurant because go. everybody's talking about it. Go. They have two hour waits. Y'all go. And y'all but they got these rules. So what, go. I, what I go. think, what I, what my opinion here is that um, that service is subjective to the customer. Um, they're banking on their service is their food being good and not their customer service. Um, and, and you know what? I'm sorry to interrupt. I guarantee right. you that this is more, more than anything, it's a play to lower your expectations and then they shock you with their level of service. Um, so, so <laughs> let me ask, let me ask this. It's a, it's a lot, it's a lot of faith in somebody you don't nah, know. Nah, nah, so what up? Well, I think he might be making an assessment say, thinking that this is know. promoted by them, but this is not, this came from the YouTuber or TikToker, yeah. um, right? Um, and, so, and, and, so, yeah, and, so, and there was a lot of, and there was a lot of people who provide, who kind of added their two cents afterwards. It was like, yeah, like this is the culture of that's happening in Atlanta, right? There's a lot of restaurants that do all that do the same thing. So that, you're well, just gonna that, stop going to restaurants if everybody adopts that culture. I mean, but the thing is, but, but it's weird because it's like they, because I guess it's one of those situations like if you bought a Lexus or a BMW, yeah, right, and it's like it drives most of the time. We try our best. You not you not rocking with that, <laughs> yeah. right? And then you're not yeah. gonna spend a BMW price and it's moving like it's a Ford. Like you're not doing that. Yeah. Like, so the, I'm, I'm gonna tell you where they come. They coming from like. You know, you've, I've been to restaurants with people that just don't want to pay the bill. And they'll figure out nine of them things on the list <laughs> so they don't have to pay. And what they're doing here is saying, you niggas going to pay us. Period. Period. So don't come here with <laughs> such and such did this and this, this and that wasn't right. Y'all gonna pay us because our food is good, and you ain't about to pluck a hair out of your joint and say you're getting point. this for free. It just ain't gonna happen. So they already know the demographic that's coming through the door and the culture that come with it. So let's flip this. Yeah. Why do you have to be the kind of customer you are? I hope it's, you got to break that down to me right there. Say so that why do you? Why does EA have to be the kind of customer he yeah. is? He comes with all these expectations. You stand now, yeah. He comes in with all of these. You know, it has to be perfect. Only in the black restaurant. Yeah. He ain't doing that at, at Ruth Chris. He ain't doing that at Flemings. He ain't doing that at you know. Nah, I think I, honestly, at Taco Bell. Nah, honestly, honestly, Rod, the people I'm talking about do this everywhere. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do it everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I had. Yeah, I experienced that. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I, experienced, I experienced that at like at the um, at the beach house. Okay. They come in and they everything is wrong. They want a discount. Yeah, yeah. Oh what? <laughs> like thirty families have already stayed here, but now all of a sudden everything yeah. is wrong. Everything, everything is wrong. Everything See, is now wrong. you can get it now. I get that part. So but now, then, but that's imagine. on the that's on the uh, consumer. That's not on the provider of the services. That's so, on the consumer. Nah, so what happened was the consumer uh, pointed this out to mm -hmm. everybody. And the, the provider already had this in place because they knew it was going to be consumers like this. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so they already was just one step ahead because we right. know we the cats that's coming once the word get out that our joint dope. Right. All y'all about to flood over here. And my, my man, we know you a big time YouTube to TikToker. And so what if you think you about to do something to this mm. restaurant or blow it up or it. whatever? Like, nah, get it. your ass out of yeah, here. I mean, and, and the and thing is, at least with the, the issue is not really with the TikToker at all. Like, he was just like, yo, this, this experience is not for me. That's what he said. Right. Yeah. He was like, yo, it's not for me. Right, and then it was just this whole I think that's thing, fair. and it was just this whole thing that kind of came up. But did he? Did, right? did the TikToker or the um, the the critic? Did did he come at him? No, okay. he, he, he just said no, he, this is not for me. He no, didn't. no, he he was like, he's like, this is what happened. He's like, I did this, they did that, right. they did this, yeah. I did that. My wife went in, yeah, told her no. Other people did this. I came, and then they were like, oh, we can sit you right now. 
And his big thing is like, yo, like I'm like everybody else. Right. Like don't don't do that. Don't do that to my wife. Right. Yeah, my yeah. sister. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. when I and then when you see my face, because you know yeah. what 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 comes with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you now you you changing your tune. Yeah. yeah right. But and that, then but then, just, and then, and then yo, the other that's part. That's just the way shit is. Right. Man. But then the like, other part was like, then like you know that video came out. You know people and then it, it caused a, caused a lot of people to like yeah. air their grievances, right? Because other people felt the same way. Right. And then. The owners responded like, "Well, who is that guy?" Like they 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 try yeah. to like they try to like play it off, right? And you know, and then but he, he did another restaurant in Atlanta did had the same thing. That person who that person responded was like was very gracious about it. Was like, "Yo, this is why we do this. This yeah. is why we do that." Do you know they have saying? a so two hour wait. Yeah, that per, that place had a two hour wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I ain't so they had that. they had a two hour wait. Like and then he, and then, I ain't nowhere got two hour wait. But then when he, right, but then when he went, but then when he yeah, went, I didn't bring that up because that, that means somebody somebody stamped no, 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 no. I can I can dig it, but at you know you know on some real stuff like when in business like everything is tied to the service and uh, customer service is tied to the the service. So at the end of the day, if you ain't got good customer service, then you probably won't like exceed a certain threshold like you can you can survive you can exist to a certain part but if you're trying to go you know up and over you're gonna have to figure out you know how the customer service has to actually match the standard of the service for you to keep you know growing uh what you got going on i rock with a principle called servo and we say it all the time now, you just broke it down it just was a it's like super long conversation but service equals experience equals results equal value mm. equals opportunity so when one thing leads to another you know when the service leads leads to the great experience or good service leads to good experience. It gives you a result. That result adds value and that value, you know, creates another opportunity, whether it's with, you know, the people I've influenced on my platform or the people that I go talk to, talk to the seven or nine people that, you know, I have to go tell I had a bad experience, right. you know, it, it leads to opportunities or no opportunities. So, you know, with that being in mind, a lot of business owners aren't really, you know, true entrepreneurs. So, you know, they never can can go past the actual uh, cooking part mm. um, or the, the, the service part. They never go past the coaching or training part because they're not, you know, they really don't know how they're going to scale this business and create more opportunities because right. customer service is has nothing to do with uh, the way they cut hair. So they right. just think that I says I cut hair good and fuck that nigga. I, I call him back when I feel like calling him back. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying? Around, so yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I mean it's directly tied to that. I just wanted to bring all this yeah, not, shit back to yeah. it. Yeah, and it's, I mean and there's other there's other options. Like you can talk about restaurants, like there's like this even a whole other thing of like uh this stuff circling around about like uh, hairdressers in particular, like yeah, a lot yeah, of like, yeah. like women hairdressers, like how they're going back to the nine to f their nine to five because because of they're not able to 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 keep customers right because of the experiences that they're providing, they're actual paying customers like where they're double booking people or doing these doing these different practices that were normalized, but it's like doesn't mean make it right. Right. You know so, like, so just because you know how to provide a service doesn't mean you actually know how to run a business. And then these parts of the business, um, you know, have to be, you know, there's systems that have to be created around those parts of the business or the business doesn't, you know, get a chance to move forward. So, you know, a lot of these people, yes, they can do this particular thing, but it doesn't mean that their their business is actually going to move um you know, move forward, um, so to speak. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's what, what, what you don't do is a similar situation. Well, not similar, but a, a lady in Greensboro, North Carolina, right? She had a restaurant mm -hmm. and she wasn't, she, she didn't know how to market the restaurant. She could cook really well. She didn't know how to market the restaurant. So this food critic, this dude, he came through and he said, yo, I'm gonna I'm I'm help you. So he did a review on the restaurant. He ate the food. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. The next day he goes back to do a follow up mm -hmm. uh, line around the door. Mm -hmm. Right. She's never experienced that. She wasn't ready for that. Ready right. For yeah. So the people, they went in. Yeah. They had bad experience. They went in about the experience yeah. and about the service. Yeah. Her response was she put she put her gloves up too. Yeah, yeah. Like y'all lying, y'all this, y'all that, not let me <laughs> learn from this. And so um yeah, it didn't go well for yeah, her. That didn't that's go tough, well for man. her. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, tough. That's shout, the other shout side. Shout out to her, man. Yeah. Shout out to her. Yeah, man. She wasn't going to call that, her name, man. but yeah. Yeah, so no, no, I just, that's just the other shout that's to the her. other yeah, shout out to her. Yeah, that's her. the other situation. So um 
What do you think we, about this? Go ahead, go ahead, this, 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 what were we gonna say? <laughs> I was saying we still got some stuff we gotta talk right, about. Right, man, right. This nigga, he hates yeah. it. He's around the block. I swear, this man. Joint, boy, man. Cause, cause Hopefully, he, this yo, if this joint don't get two thousand views, cause off he bougie the rip, uh, about this restaurant joint, man. We gotta take <laughs> your mic, man. We oh, gotta, you said because I'm what? I think you bougie, bougie, nah, because you bougie, nah. Man, you gotta, <laughs> okay, but but I bet you we can find a video where he got it out the mud. Yeah, so he got it out the mud, but now everything has to be perfect before he goes into the restaurant corner cookout. Exactly. Complaining That's about not nothing. The, the not food is. He gonna not take the it. The food cold. He gonna take sure. it home. Throw it in the microwave. And he, and he gonna wait in the line for forever. He gonna wait in line, burn up his gas, and we we we. It's not. It will not be a podcast. My topic. Man. Yeah. Um, it's this. It's this. It's this mini me. This mini me. Uh, uh, I call it mini me uh, uh, business model. That's is super dope. And okay. want to get your take on it. Um, so Brian Tracy just launched a thing now where you can attach yourself to his platform, to his brand. Um, he's doing a book and he's getting co-authors, right? Yeah, you pay X amount of bucks, yeah. dollars to become a co-author. Um, um, Max Maxwell, not Max Maxwell. What's the other Max? Uh, John, Max Maxwell, John, John Maxwell. John Maxwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. John Maxwell. Uh, John Maxwell, he did the same thing um, several years ago and I actually went through that program. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I went through that John Maxwell program. And so basically what they're doing is- I or went through a program with too. Yeah, change, huh? change your world. I went through a program with Oh, did you? Too. Yeah, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So I went through his coaching program. So oh, basically nice. this guy, um, I think it's Paul Martinelli came to him, right? And said, hey, John, you got all this content. You yeah. got all these books. Yeah. You got all these courses. You got all this. You know, there are people out there that want to be you. Why don't we open up like a coaching program mm -hmm. to teach them how to be you? And oh, by the way, we're going to use all of your content mm -hmm. for them. They're going to use all of your content. So you could go through these different um, disciplines. So if you want to be a speaker, you can go through the speaker discipline. If you want to be a coach, you can go through that coach discipline. But it's a dope idea because people paid people, me being one of them, paid to go through this program to get this designation to say that you're a John Maxwell mm -hmm. taught coach right. and then you got access to all of this uh, content to use in your coaching practice right um, and so uh, when Paul went to him he tells the story about how um, he told Paul he said um, I trust you but I don't believe you I don't believe nobody's going to pay to go through the coaching program, you know, this stuff that I've been doing for 40 years and then, you know, pay to get this designation to use all of my content. Well, lo and behold, it's a multi-million dollar business now. And, 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 and Paul, he, he made a big bet. He gave, he said, okay, let's do this. I'm going to give you a million dollars. I'm going to give you a million kind of like a uh, retainer. I'm going to give you this million bucks and we make it back. I'm going to get my million back. And then our partnership will go on and, you know, do great things. And they're, they're killing it. So when I saw the thing, I actually sent it to you with um, Brian Tracy, um, somebody I think we both, you know, have a lot of respect for the work that, yeah, that he's absolutely. done over the years. He's doing the same thing. He's basically saying, okay, we're going to take my influence. We're going to take my platform. Um, there are plenty of people out here who want to be um, coaches or uh, who want to be authors. I'm going to let you attach yourself to my, you know, my wagon and go help you get access to millions of people on my platform to um, talk about, you know, what you do and how you help people. So I think it's a dope model. So I'm, I'm, I'm just bringing that up because there are people that have, you know, they've done things for years. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. they have all this content, like you got all that, you got 17 books and, you know, un, I don't know how many posts and speeches. And so there might be a, a, a transformational coach or a specialist or someone who wants to be that. They may say, you know what I want to, and you are, you got the blueprint already, mm -hmm. right? So they can just yeah. kind of hook them, hook themselves to your wagon. But if there's anybody out there, I just wanted to just to bring it up so that that's a dope model where you can actually, you know, create a lot of revenue and also create a lot of influence and create a lot of value, mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. across the board. So yeah. you can, so if I want to be like a Lynch, yeah, 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 clone. I can go be that, right? Oh yeah, because you got clone. plenty. You got yeah, plenty we, of stuff. We man. got it. You got to take me through the training program, though. Yeah, I got it. We got it. So, you got to cuss people like EA out all that. too, because yeah, EA said. The, so EA, you know, I was describing AWOL, my, right? My service. No, I knew. I knew exactly what you were doing. Okay. Yeah, yeah I knew yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why I was like, oh, if it's a class. Like I get it, like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like I ain't a snowflake. Like yo, if, if I'm in a class and he's like cursing me out like, to keep going, yeah, I'm I'm cool. 
okay. what I'm saying? But right. like, if it's like, yo, where the, where the f is my money at from from my from my fees? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, you might get that too. Don't nah, yeah, don't don't nah, don't press me. Nah, nah. So that's a that's a different conversation right there. Oh god, oh god, oh man. But yeah, well, if somebody hit the card a couple times. Now we gotta, you know what I mean? Now we gotta press. <laughs> exactly, but if yeah, you yeah. but if you're out there, man, and you, and, you, press. and you have like the blueprint for something, and you have you know you have significant influence, and you can just basically convert that to creating uh, again. I call them mini me's, creating a whole bunch of mini me's that go out, and then they um, you know you create revenue because they got to go through your program, but then also they sell your they sell your stuff, yeah. they sell your books, they sell your journals, they sell you know your wares. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty dope. Uh, I mean, you know, we got the. Uh, we got the same type of model uh, popping off. So when 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 you sent it to me, for me it was, uh, you know, I'm looking at the, you know, we got this thing. What's the play? Yeah, what's the play? Yeah, what's right. the play? Which I always you know, looking at the play. Hopefully, um, y'all be checking out. I was uh, looking at the end the, game. The big homeboys, uh, you know, joint real soon. The what's the play uh, joint, Rob Brown. Uh, y'all can check that out real soon. Coming to you uh, where he breaks down the plays, um, especially the big financial joints. Um, but with this one right here, I was you know I hit hit the big homie back and I just told him you know um, yeah that's pretty dope. Um, I was like yo it's probably like fifty k and better. Um, you know what I mean to actually uh, do it. He's like nah man it's only yeah, like five k okay. or something like that. I'm like yo nah Rod that's like the, they just trying to figure out where they can start with the pitch and everything. So um, yeah I think it's a, I, I think it's a super dope play. Five k is the baseline. Yeah, uh, it's the um, it's uh, they they they're asking this information so that they can um, grab your email and everything, and then you know um, you know just direct market to you um, on either a down sell or up sell depending on um, what information you provide them in that uh, in that uh, that sales process and that and that, that, that on that sales page, which is pretty dope. It's a, a dope joint, and um, I, I just don't think that. Um, I think it's, it's super dope. Uh, we actually ran a play like that a few years ago, mm -hmm. um, uh, but we 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 did the play to the influencer. Did the play so we back the yeah we backdoored the influencer. So we went to Arizona. Understand. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We went to yeah, the, yeah. the 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 one or two day event that they had. We paid for the extra day so that we could get. Um, ex more exclusive FaceTime right. um, with that person. We we built brand and face recognition with them. Influenced the influencer. Right. Got them back um, on board with us to do the launch of our thing, and right. then um, uh, uh, tied our brand to their brand, right. which was a leading brand, and you know across the, in the country space. and in that space, you know, and um, we were able Why to. Why you don't like to use names, man? Why are we talking in code? No, nah, I'm just I'm running just, the play. It's just, it's uh, just all about the, so the name. You know, important. It's all about the play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all about the principle right. of play and how you can, you know, you can kind of backdoor it and reverse engineer the same type of thing. You know what I mean? And and and, and get it done again, or you can do it, you know, on a lower scale, you know, Got as it. well. But yeah, 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 pretty dope stuff. Uh, what do you think, Rod? About uh, what do you? I saw something um, that we talked about uh, with the reparations piece. Mm -hmm. um, I know we were talking about reparations and all that different type of stuff. So uh, I saw that Nas, Steve Stout, a couple other people um, had kind of put together, you know, um, some like awards or some, oh, some yeah, money yeah. or something like that. And they wound up giving um, 500 grand to uh, Rock Kim and mm. Scarface and some health care, you know, all this different right. type of stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, I saw that and I was like, yo, we go reparations right here. You know, some, some you know, they, they actually put together some stuff. Uh, and yeah, typically the, the, typically the reparations come from, the people or the person or the group that caused the harm. Yeah. Right. So I like the, I mean, you can't say nothing bad about what Steve Stout and that group has done. Right. But I'm not sure if it's reparations. I, I think that's, that's more of group economics, which it makes no sense why more entertainers and athletes don't participate in but I think that's more so a group economics reparations is where someone says I, I did harm to you um, or I did harm to someone 
that you counted on, which ultimately affected you. So I want to repair that situation. And it doesn't have to be with money. It could be with opportunity. It could be with information. Um, but yeah, so I think I think that's more so group economics. They came together and they, they came up with the money to, to, to go help the people in their group. So I think it's dope, 100%, but I don't think it's reparations. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think that might. I don't just think be, they did. That might just be them. word semantics, you know. At this point, nah, but, uh, nah. You know, if you if you help them repair something, um, nah, I don't like, think it's semantics. Reparations is intentional. That's like we I, can, I mean, somebody. We could look somebody. it up and then we could just make it. You know, uh, um, what you got over there for reparation, uh, big dog on the EA Sports. definition side. Uh, uh, says measures to redress violations of human rights by providing a range of material and symbolic benefits to victims or their families, as well as affected communities. Yeah. So now that's uh, one. And then you can kind of like go down the line. What's definition two and three and four? And, you know, we, you don't always have to <laughs> use the word with the first definition that actually pops up. So like you like we could actually have a lot of stuff going on with mad different words and doesn't mean that like we could say slave. So it's the act mean of that. making amends, offering uh, offering exp- expiation, excuse me, or giving satisfaction for a wrong or injury, something done or given as amends or satisfaction. Yeah, the payment so, of damages. So you so you uh, you got to that understanding by getting going to the third definition. Second. This is the second one. So right, right there with a, another little bit of dig, like, or uh, I mean, it, I just skip this one. This is repairing or keeping in repair. Yeah, they 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 helped out. They helped out some people that didn't have it. Um, and, and but this what was nice. The, key, the key word is victim. They weren't. They were not Steve Stout's victim. Steve Stout uh, uh, didn't. But that part on. wasn't. There was a victim in the third definition. In the first one. Yeah, we, we went past the first one. So we went past the first one because the first one actually is, it, you're, you're exactly right when we're talking about the first definition. And uh, So you're saying that there's multiple meanings for reparations? Absolutely. Huh? And there's multiple meanings to damn near every word like that we use on a daily basis. But if we only think that we can only use one word one way. My hamstrings then, can't argue with you. My yeah. hamstrings cannot argue with you. Your hamstrings still hurt? Nah, because I didn't do the leg day. Ah. <sighs> But no, you're right. I, I made get it. it up, though. I get it. So it's yeah, as you're saying, it's multiple definitions or multiple meanings for that word, and one like what they did can fit into one of those slots. Definitely, absolutely. I just think the reparations I was talking about was all about victimizing someone, a lineage, a people, and then coming back and the perpetrators of the victimization repairs that situation. Yeah. yeah, so it, it just wasn't the the institution or the perpetrator, but it actually is going to people who didn't get their just due when they should have got it. Facts. So it's still the same thing. It's just coming from a different source. Yeah, I got it. And I and, and I just I don't know, but I just believe a reparation can can only come from one source. Can can't come from me and you were victimized. I don't believe. I can repair that for you when I didn't cause it for you. Both of us, we were side by side when it happened. So I don't believe I can, I can, I can group economically, if that's a phrase, help yeah. with your situation, but yeah, it makes sense. I didn't cause it. So I can't technically repair it. I can make it yeah, so better. The with, only reason why I'm like uh, talking about this, advocating for it is that, when people in leadership actually start to do things as opposed to just waiting for other people to do something, um, the whole, the, everything changes. Like people's perspective change, um, you know, uh, people's, the way of giving actually changes now. Right. Um, so you have a bunch of like rich rappers or mm-hmm. people in the music industry that give money to, you know, causes that may have nothing to do with rap, period. Right. and. Now they might see the way these people are moving and it just makes a 
total shift. Yeah. Um, so I always example. talk about how like transformation starts with, with us or starts inside. And mm. if people like us can say, you know what? All right. Yeah. We do want them to repair a situation or we do want them to give something, but Hey man, maybe we can do a little something on this side first and we can actually change the Give game. An example, so, right? Yeah. That's like, yeah. that's just how I be moving. So, and now we be having people looking like, yo, we should move like that too. Like, I, I saw that. That was pretty dope. Man. Maybe we could do that too. You, you understand what I'm saying? I got it. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got it's pretty it. dope, man. I got yo, it. we got to get ready to go, Rob. We got to roll. We got to yeah, roll. We got man. stuff to do, man. It's been awesome as always, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for listening. If you still listening right now, I, we definitely appreciate you. Um, we, we don't ask you to pay anything. We just ask you to pay attention, man. So please, if you benefited from anything that we talked about today, please share this pod with your friends, with your family, with that huge circle that you have. Um, like us, you know, share, uh, give us five stars wherever you listen to your podcast on Spotify or Apple Music. <laughs> uh, EA, send me the link to that restaurant. And um, with that, man, we out. Yeah, we got to pull up, man. We're going to pull up. Yeah, What's the name sure. of the restaurant, man? I'm pulling up. It was called the official uh, milk and honey. The official milk and honey, man. We're and, going to come through. And, and Rodis Cabin. We're going to take you a too. We're doing Rodis a review Rodis, too. Rodis Cabin. We're going to take you That's all I'm saying. Rodis talking big, big talk. You we know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not when you go out talk, there, man. just stand on business, man. That's it. It's, you're suggesting that they're not. Hey, we're out, man. I'm Rod Brown. Peace. I'm Lynch Hunt. Man. Well, I'll let y'all the next one. Peace. Right, peace.